what's up guys we played another game on the road to 2000 with the black pieces against 1e4 make me a maze 1923 so we played the Karo Khan <coughs> because it's what I play he goes for just knight f3 he brings both the knights out so now I recapture I think you can also bring the bishop out but I always recapture and then when they take with the knight, I always bring the other knight out here. And they usually take. I used to play E takes F, but now recently I've been wanting to try G takes F. So I'm trying to get experience with it. So I take this way. Um, the Bronstein Larson variation. He plays D4. Normal stuff. So now I want to play e6, but I don't want to lock my bishop in. So now that I have the chance, I bring it out and pin his knight. So that I can play e6. And um, what does he do? He blocks the pin with his bishop. Now it's my turn. I can go e6 now. That's what I do. And e6 is nice to help control d5 so that he can never set up a push. He develops his bishop to an active diagonal. That makes sense. So now I want to develop my knight, my queen, and castle long. I go here first because castling long isn't going to work with this guy staring down this diagonal. So I develop my bishop and offer the trade. He doesn't take it. He just reinforces his bishop and prepares either way castling. I go here to double the pressure and force him to either retreat or take. I also knew that if he took and I took with my queen it's kind of like a waste of tempo but I felt it was still important to do because I wanted to develop my knight and I can't do that if my queen is here. At least now I can develop my knight. So he takes, I take back, and now I'm ready to develop in castle. He goes c3, defending the central pawn. Makes sense. I develop my knight. Makes sense. He castles. Makes sense. I castle long. Makes sense. He goes queen e3. Um, maybe protecting the knight. Maybe wanting to do something here, I'm not sure what. Maybe also wanting to bring the knight backwards. And I should probably just take the knight. Because what I do know in the Bronstein Larson is a lot of times your pawns are all on light squares. And then your knight can dance around through the dark squares along with the queen. And so you have this knight against this bishop, and you, that's how you play. But I wanted to try something different. I wanted to see what would happen if I kept this bishop on the board instead of giving it up for the knight. And it did not work out well for me. I definitely am going to be trading this next time I play Bronson Larson. Um, I went king b8 just because I figured how bad could that be, <laughs> right? Always play king b1 and king b8. Also to protect this pawn in case any weird try some tactic. I just thought it would overall make my position a little better. So he puts a rook on the e file. That's not too scary. And now you'll, you definitely want to play f5. And that's another reason to take the knight, is so that it can't jump into these squares. And then only your knight can use those squares. But I did develop the rook, bringing it to a semi-open file facing his king. Right? Maybe there's stuff like this. Um, so now he retreats the knight. And now I wish I took the knight. Because the bishop here doesn't scare me. And... 
I don't know. So he offers the trade of light squared bishops. I didn't do it though. I played f5 to create a square for my knight because it could, didn't have any real squares. And I think this square would be good for my knight if not for the fact that his knight, once here, can get into this square, which this knight controls. So if he didn't have this knight on the board, I could easily just plop a knight in. It'll look beautiful. But if he does have this knight and he gets here, then I'm in trouble. And that's what happened in the game. So he brings it around this way, gaining a tempo on my queen and improving his knight. I retreat my queen, not to the diagonal with stuff on it, but to the safer diagonal. Also kind of just watching his knight. So he jumps his knight into the center. Now I should have just taken this knight. And then when he takes back with the pawn, it looks like an even game. Probably will end up trading bishops, rooks, and play like a queen and pawn end game. Probably very jarish. I didn't take though. He is attacking this pawn. And instead of taking, I wanted to complicate the game. But it turns out that my complication is really bad. Because now that his knight's still in the game and his queen has access, he's playing on the dark squares when I'm supposed to be playing on the dark squares. And so. I move my knight in, saying, okay, my queen will defend. I don't remember if I missed this move or what the deal was, or if I had calculated in advance that I was just going to take the bishop and give him the knight. But that's not what you want to do. You want to keep your knight and not have your bishop. So he moves his queen here, pressuring my knight, pressuring this pawn. You could defend the knight with the queen. I didn't want to defend, although I should have. Um, so I just took his bishop, saying, okay, you could take my knight. That's what he does. So now I have to move the bishop because it's under attack. Um, and I really wasn't liking my position with this knight here. He just goes a4. And I don't really see what to do because I don't have any plans. My plans always revolve around that knight dancing around. But now, you know, and this diagonal is open for my queen usually, and he has a light square bishop. But now that I have the light square, I don't really have a plan. My bishop's kind of dumb with all these pawns. I don't really have, you know, I'm not going to go hunting these pawns and open up my king. I don't really. I, what am I going to do? Go for this? I mean, it's easily enough. Like, that's not really a thing. With this guy in the way. My queen has no access. So I didn't know what to do, and I said, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's see if I can hold this, if I can draw this by sacking my rook. So, of course, it's not a good move, but it's an interesting move. Um, I knew he would take, and then I knew I would take, and I said to myself, you know, there's no way I'm going to win this, but I want to see him break through this, because it's interesting, right? Because I have a lot of light square control. So, now that the knight's gone, I thought it would be fun to see what happened. So, he pushes. I push back to gain some to stop his advance. And now I have even more light squares. So I'm thinking, okay, let's see how he breaks through on the light squares to defeat me. He brings his rook in. I go to the light square. Um, he advances. I just stop his advance, also controlling light squares. Of course, my bishop is absolutely ridiculous. He takes my rook. I take controlling light squares and I'm saying if he can't advance his pawns somehow he can't win the game right so he has to break through somehow so I was having fun even though I knew I was losing so he goes for the queen trade 
Um, I can't avoid it since it's a pin. But I said his next move is going to be f4. And that then my bishop is never going to move again. I guess it can go this way. But either way, I went f4 first to open up my bishop immediately. It seems a lot smarter that way. Um, and also, he can't take the pawn because it's x-ray defended, which is kind of kind of cute. So he takes the queen, captures back, and it's a human with white can mess this up, and draw and black gets a draw. So I was I was kind of interested to see how he did it. I made a bunch of mistakes though. He brings his rook up maybe to advance his pawns. I just kind of move, make random bishop moves because I, I have no nothing else to do. There are no plans in this position. There's just move your bishop back and forth, see what happens. Here I just did a funny move, but it doesn't actually do anything because you can't attack his rook. So um, he moves, and now you know I don't want to move this pawn because it's this pr protection for this pawn. I don't want to move this pawn for the same reason. You can't move your king anywhere but here, because then you lose this pawn. So you kind of in like a zugzwang. You have you only have this square for your king, and like just whatever with your bishop. So I just move my bishop. He breaks through, so now I have to take because his pawn's lost. So that's that. Now his king can get in, which is unfortunate. It wasn't fully closed. If it was fully closed, he could make no progress. But because it's open. He can get through easy. So I just move my bishop back and forth. He advances his king. Um, it makes no difference. I'm just doing random moves. So see, just seeing how he breaks through. Just going back and forth. He brings his king in. I just go back and forth. He goes here, I guess, preparing this, which I would take. But for some reason, and I don't know why, I move my bishop here. But I can't remember what I was thinking. Well, I don't know why I would try to give up this pawn when you you don't even win this because it's defended. It seems kind of crazy. Why didn't I go king c8 is my question. What was I thinking? If he gets in here... Or was I thinking if he, that he was going to sack, take, take... And then just win here. Maybe. He could do that too. Yeah, yeah. It's completely losing for black since the king can get in. But. So I went here, which is also losing. Equally losing. And then he just starts mopping things up. I go back here to defend this pawn. He could still sack. I thought he was going to, but instead he pushes the pawns, which is good enough. I'm just moving back and forth because I have nothing else to do. While I watch him break through slowly. I still try to put up resistance. Defend this pawn. X-ray this pawn. Um, now this is still defended. And I always go for stalemate. Because I'm that kind of guy. He just advances his pawns. I obviously can't do anything to stop them. Um, so still looking for an op a stalemate opportunity. I'm looking for the right time to sack this bishop. This was not the right time, but if I didn't do it, it would have been mate in the next move. So had to do it. And then he just mates me, right? Yeah, then he just mates me. Moral of the story. In the Bronstein Larson, take this knight. Just take this knight. When he takes back, you're fine. Now you're f5. This bishop's restricted. He has to go for this plan, I guess. Something like that. Now you have the only control of these squares. Get your knight in. You can even, yeah, get your knight in. Rook to g8. Maybe throw this guy up the board. But yeah, having this is a lot less scary than that knight in here. Alright, we go again. Onward.
to 2000. Give the Bronstein Larson a try. It's actually pretty fun. You'll lose a lot of games at first, but you'll learn as you go.